What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I've got a bit of a unique video uh, here for you today, kind of in a very weird, not weird, weird is the wrong word. I'm in a unique situation um, helping a friend out right now and I figured that this could be a good time to just put together a video. We do have some things planned. Uh, we're going to be going racing here shortly uh, with the ZL1 and with the Mach 1, but we have another car here today. Um, that is, it's not my car, but it is a friend's car um, who unfortunately recently passed away and uh, just found out about this and um, spoke with his wife and she was interested in selling the car. This was his car, it was his baby. It stayed in his garage at its own separate garage just for the car, it sat under wraps, um, but it's a pretty cool car. I think you all know what it is if you saw the thumbnail. Um, what you may not know is it's a stick shift and you know how we feel about stick shifts here on the channel we love them um so anyways she approached me um explained what happened a very unfortunate story i said i would certainly help her sell it um so i've got it up online here but i figured while i have it um why not tell you a little bit about it and maybe you're in the market for a vehicle maybe you've seen my previous videos and you said you know what i like the camaro but what about the hellcat right you know you've got somewhere in this mid $50,000 range to spend? And do you want the high revving, kind of sleek V8 modern technology? Do you want the Camaro, right? The 6.2 liter LT4 with the blower, or do you want the big 707 horsepower Hellcat? Well, let's talk about it. Um, we'll run you through the things real quick, give you some, some ideas to think about if you're trying to choose between those three. And then we'll tell you at the end of the video, um, kind of what we have planned for the channel, what's coming up next, and what kind of racing you can expect to see between these two cars, because it's not gonna be on a road course. So here we are inside the Hellcat. Um, it's a big car. Uh, that's the first thing I'm just going to come out and say. But let me kind of show you what you get uh, for this price range. So kind of as I mentioned, this is a 2015 model. It's the first model year. Uh, this is a low mileage car based on kind of market research for what these go for. Expect to pay in the mid 50,000s for something like this. So what is what does this get you? Well, let me show you. In this configuration, it gets you a six speed manual, which is definitely not the fastest way from point A to point B, but there's just something cool about rowing your own gears. And I must point out that if you are thinking about a stick shift Hellcat, this is one of the more unique shifters that I've ever seen in a car. It's as if, you know, if this was a Mustang, this would sit down about that much lower, right? Because you've got the center console here. I don't know if it's because they had to build the center hump up higher or what. I don't know if this because this maybe shares similarities with other vehicles, but it just feels like you could be sitting lower everywhere. Your elbow could be lower. And then, you know, this is a straight line right here, but if this was lower, it would just feel more normal. I just, I don't know. It just looks like you're putting so much torque on that shifter. Cause let's be honest, if you're in a Hellcat, you're gonna be ripping some gears in this thing. Um, so that is a little bit different. The other thing I will definitely point out is the clutch on this. Um, definitely one of the stiffer factory clutches out there. Probably the stiffest that I have felt in a while. Now, there are some cool little gimmicky features here, like the red key, right? So the red key unlocks more horsepower or whatever it is. I don't know. But we got the red key here. Um, you go ahead and hit the button. You get decent gauges. Um you get this big screen here. Dodge is known for those big screens, um, but it is a 2015 model. So I think for a 2015, it's pretty good. Um, by today's standards, it could be a little better. When you turn this on, you know, you see your normal screen right here. Um, I'm sure this thing has Apple CarPlay, or at least I assume it does. Um, the climate control, it does have heated and cooled seats. It does have a heated steering wheel, which is nice. Um, there is, if you press the SRT button down here, um, it'll tell you how much horsepower it makes. It's kind of gimmicky. Um, but you know, if you go and switch the modes, it'll switch the modes on the screen for you. And I can tell you just from driving it, um, just from driving this thing around to show it for a few times. Um, cause like I said, I'm selling it, um, for a friend, 
you do know a difference. So if you just get in and drive it and you go from like sport to just regular, it does stiffen up the steering. I think the shocks are a little bit stiffer. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so here's the Hellcat motor. It's got the big supercharger on top. Um, just the only thing that's been done to this, when you hear the noise of it, it does have a cold air intake on it, which I'm sure aids in that supercharger whine that you're hearing. A um, couple cool things to point out. Look how wide the supercharger belt is. I mean, this thing is this thing is huge, right? So normally when you bolt on like a, a Vortec or a Paxton or something like that to your car, the stock rib system is gonna be like a six or an eight rib system. This one is massive. They do not want this thing to slip from the factory. I think that's super cool. Um, and it just, it's just a different looking motor. If you're used to looking at the Coyote, um, it still has pretty surprisingly big cylinder heads. Um, the valve covers it, and it sits out real far and you've got kind of the, the intake that comes straight down unlike you know some of your older style vehicles but pretty cool motor um they don't cover it up with so much plastic that you can't see anything you could probably do away with these little covers on top of the valve covers you probably don't need them just make nicer valve covers but um you know they're probably hide, hiding some wiring and stuff but all in all not a bad engine bay um looking around here it's pretty tight though. I mean, everything is fitting there pretty tight, just like a modern car. Okay, so I, I'm trying to keep this video short and kind of to the point. So if I had to sum up the stick shift Hellcat here in just a few words, um, the biggest one I think would be nostalgia. I think Dodge is going after, um, they're going after the guy who had a muscle car back in the day with a big block in it, or maybe they didn't have a muscle car back in the day with a big block in it, but they really wanted one um, because this thing is all about kind of the presence. Everyone knows Hellcat. It's got that cool emblem on the side, 700 horsepower. I will tell you straight away um, from when I drove this before, and I'll show you a clip of my wife racing one. It's not as fast as the, uh, the ZL1. It is not. Um, you know, 57 more horsepower doesn't matter. Weight is a big factor here. So when you drive this thing around, you definitely, um, it has a presence to it. It's big. It's very comfortable on the freeway and surprisingly quiet. I think it is quieter on the freeway um, than the Mach 1 or the ZL1. But it weighs a lot. Um, and maybe there's a lot of sound editing in here. I don't know. What I do know is when you step on the gas, Although you may not be blown away by how quickly it accelerates, you will love the sound. So let me show you some clips here of the sound so you can hear that um, because I think that is the biggest selling point for this vehicle is the sound that it makes. So I want to be really clear here. As I mentioned, this is, is, is a very unfortunate situa situation. Um, the gentleman who owned the Hellcat passed away. You know, since I've had it, I've strictly been trying to sell the car and I'm totally honest with you. Um, I haven't been driving it. I just drove it. Basically, I picked up the car. I drove it to get an appraisal and I drove it back home and it's been sitting. The video clips I'm about to show you were from about a year ago. Um, and the gentleman who owned this car brought it over. He was excited to show me the car, threw me and my wife the keys and said, go out, drive it, have a blast. Um, and we did. And, and I know for a fact that he enjoyed that car. Um, like I said, although it did, you know, it had its own garage and it sat in a recover and all that stuff. He drove it. Um, I know for a fact, his wife mentioned he got a ticket for street racing. He was going over well into the triple digits, let's say. So I know he drove the car, um, when he tossed me the keys and said, go have fun. You kind of don't have to tell me twice. I did that. But now in the current situation, I'm really not driving the car because it's, it's different. I'm trying to get the highest resale value I can. Um, for his for his wife. Um, so we'll show you the clips. We'll kind of talk about the car um, a little bit and then we'll wrap up the video um, just with what we have planned up here next. So 
as you can see, that car is an absolute hoot. Um, like I said, the biggest thing for it is that motor, the sound. Um, if you just wanted something that you weren't really, you didn't need to be the fastest around the track or in a straight line, but you just wanted that feel and that sound, it's hard to beat the Hellcat. So um, if I had to rank these cars, one, two, and three, I'm gonna go number one. Number one for me is the Mach 1. Number two is the ZL1, and number three is the Hellcat. But you let me know in the comments what you think, how you would rank them. Um, if you've driven them, let me know. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Okay, so lastly, what do we have up here next? Well, uh, we've got roll racing coming out at our local track April 30th. So we are gonna be taking my wife's ZL1 and my car. Basically, uh, how this works is you get up to roughly about a 40 mile an hour roll, you hit it from 40, you've got a thousand feet of racing, there's no times, there's nothing, um, you're kind of on the honor system, and I'll be honest with you, uh, my, my game plan here is to cheat a lot, because there is no way that 650 horsepower against 480 horsepower is going to be fair, um, I'm going to try and get this thing light. Um, I'm going to try and get her to fill that thing up and get it heavy, full of fuel. Um, we're going to try out the no lift shift feature. We are going to try everything. Um, I'm going to jump the gun, foot flat, banging gears. We'll see. I'm hoping she misses a shift or I can just out drive her. Uh, but again, that's April 30th. So check back. We will have tons of footage of that trash talking ahead of time. Um, I think it's going to be super fun. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it kind of helped you sway you one way or the other. If you were curious about those three models and if you're looking to buy a Hellcat, uh, please reach out to me. Um, I'll leave the link to my Instagram below or you can get me in the comments. That car is for sale. So hope you guys enjoyed the video again. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. See you guys next time on Truck and Roll.